Today we're talking about slab leaks and leak detection and it all starts with the sewer and water test and we're going to talk about it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. This is your meter box and that is where your plumbing system begins. And your sewer line is out here somewhere. That's where it ends. So literally, your plumbing system starts at your meter, goes through the yard to your valve box, into your house, goes through your plumbing system, gets flushed down the drain or goes down the drain, comes back out and ends up here. In a slab leak and leak detection, it all starts here and it ends out here also. You're responsible for everything on your side of the meter and responsible for everything coming up to the city tap. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the whole sewer water test starts right here at the two-way clean outs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a test ball and I've got a clean out here that actually goes down and towards the city tap. I've got one under the bushes that you can't see that actually goes down and goes up under the house. What that does is that creates a U shape. So if you've got a stopped up sewer just under the edge of your house, you can go in this one and go in, it'll clean out that way. If you've got a stopped up sewer here to the city tap, you'll go in this one and your sewer machine will go that way. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna test this, take this test ball, we're gonna stick it in this one and stick it right down in between them. The reason that we wanna do that is we can take a light, look down in the other side, make sure that no water's going past it once we fill it up. But also, this clean out is almost at slab level. It's actually up into the slab level at elevation wise. So when we start filling it with water and fill it to here, we know that we are up into the slab and everything below the slab is being tested. Okay, so now that we have it pumped up, We've got a test ball right between the two clean outs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it with water up to this level, and that'll make sure that none of the sewer line under the house is leaking at all. So guys, as we fill this up, I don't wanna drop my hose in there because you actually create a cross connection there. Now, there is a vacuum breaker on this hose bib, so it wouldn't be a problem. It's just not a good habit to get into. So as we start getting to the top, I've got my hands on the hose to make sure that I can kink it off. I don't want it to overflow a lot. I mean, it really wouldn't hurt anything out here in a flower bed, but I like getting it right up to the top and letting it set. That way I know it's not going anywhere. And I'm full of on the P-trap. So as you see, I'm in my meter box. Now, I can look at my meter and I know my meter's not spinning, but I also know that because I have the MeterDog remote leak detection system installed. And this to me is a great product. Normally when a home inspector will come out or when people think they may have a water leak under their house, the first thing they can do is come out and look in their meter and see if they're either their low flow indicator is turning or on a digital meter like I have, it'll let you know how many gallons per minute your meter's actually turning at the time. I've got a valve here, which is where I'll turn the water off in a minute, but the first thing I want to do is I want to put a gauge on at the house so I know what the normal pressure is. What is my static pressure when the meter zone, the city zone, and my house is just setting stagnant all day long? So we're going to go do that first, then we're going to come back and turn the meter off. So now that we got the sewer line full, what we're going to do is go ahead and disconnect the hose get the gauge on here, that way we can shut off the water meter, and then we're running both tests at the same time, that way we're not out here all day long. These gauges are great, they're not very expensive. You can pick them up at any plumbing supply house or any box store. I like these Watts gauges, they're very good. And when I ease this thing on, since it's a vacuum breaker, it's gonna spill out a little bit of water. It's gonna take my pressure up to just city water pressure. Now this is why we do not call this a hydrostatic test. We're not applying any pressure. This is the city pressure. So whenever we turn off the meter, we're not applying anything. We just want to make sure that it holds the city water pressure for 15 minutes. Okay, so now that we've put the gauge on and we know what the pressure is, all we're going to do is turn the water off. 
Now I've got another video about how to turn the water off to your house. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video now. Literally, you're just gonna reach in here and turn the valve off. So we are gonna do that now. So now that I've turned it around to the locked position, the meter's off, everything's closed, and my house should not be losing any pressure at all. Well, I figure while I'm waiting, I might as well take a nap. Gotta wait about 30 minutes. See y'all in a little bit. You think this is easy? So as you can see, the P-trap here for my filtration system is still full of water. So now we're gonna go ahead and let the air out. This has held water for over 30 minutes and not dropped at all. So we know that the sewer test held. Now, guys, you saw me. I put a test ball in here. I did not apply any external pressure to the sewer line at all, not even the water line. That's why we do not call this a hydrostatic test. At Texas Green Plumbing, we call it a sewer water test. Guys, if you have rubber gem caps like this, I recommend leaving the stainless steel hose clamp off because I just want these set on not too tight. If anything ever stops up, instead of backing up into my house and flooding inside the house, a little bit of pressure will put these caps right off. And once they push those caps off, I may have a mess out here, but at least I'm not trying to get toilet paper and poop out of my carpet. Much better deal. That's a neat trick to know. So guys, a sewer and water test begins right here. We start with the sewer by filling it up. We put a gauge on the house and we turn the water off. We watch everything for 30 minutes. That's to make sure there are no leaks under the slab. We recommend that for every buyer that you represent. The reason being, those can be some of the most expensive plumbing repairs that there can be. I know Trek and certain real estate companies frown on a hydrostatic test. Guys, there's nothing wrong with a sewer water test. If you've got a plumber that is actually doing a hydrostatic test, you need to get rid of him. Do the right thing. The sewer water test does not and cannot damage anything under the house. And that's why we recommend it, to help you save your clients money. And by the way, we're gonna remember to turn the water on before we leave. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.